the 11th of November, and the Social Democrat Danilo Turk becomes the third president of the Republic of Slovenia. As he takes up office, so Slovenia takes on the rotating presidency of the European Union, picking up where Portugal will leave off on January the 1st. Euronews met this former international diplomat at his campaign headquarters a few days before he officially takes up the reins. And to begin, he outlined his vision of Europe and Slovenia's presidency of the EU. Mr. Turk, hello. When you were elected, uh, you have, uh, well, one of your messages to the EU was uh, trust us and we will hold a good presidency of the EU. Do you feel this trust is missing at the moment? I don't think so. Uh, I believe that uh, this message is coming from every quarter in Slovenia. I think that Slovenia is really quite united with regard to the importance of uh, EU presidency and the uh, fact that uh, the choice of Slovenia was already an expression of trust uh, and I think that since that choice was made uh, Slovenia did everything as it should and uh, we are well prepared. Well, you said that everybody would be watching you, especially the, the new EU members. So, um, where do you place your priorities? What difference can you make? Priorities are set by issues which uh, relate to uh, European Union as a whole, no matter who presides. I think it is very important that the new treaty was finalized during the Portuguese presidency. So, one of the issues which had the potential of becoming a complicating factor in the European Union was removed in a timely fashion. And this really uh, sets the stage for other things that will have to happen in the European Union. I think Lisbon strategy will be very high on our agenda agenda from among general issues and then obviously there will be a number of strategic issues such as energy and environment which obviously has a developmental dimension but also a political dimension because it has to do with the relations between European Union and Russia and then also obviously there are specific issues such as Kosovo, Middle East where European Union has to make itself felt as an important global actor and here Slovenia will try to help. Regarding the, the Western Balkans, you have uh, asked for a fast integration of all the, the states in the, in the region, so where do you start? And no, I think that all uh, countries of Western Balkans have legitimate aspirations in that regard. I mean, they are Europe. They're not a black hole in Europe. So I think one has to understand the psychology and politics of this uh, quest for membership in the European Union. Uh, on the other hand, uh, one also has to recognize that candidate countries have to fulfill conditions. So uh, Slovenia will try to help uh, those countries to be uh, quicker and better prepared to fulfill conditions which are necessary for membership in the European Union. Including for Serbia? Absolutely. I think one has to be very serious about these matters. Um, it is one thing to start the accession process, uh, it's another thing to talk about admission. And, um, and I think for that, for the latter part, it's clear that uh, things have to happen. I mean, general knowledge has to be handed over to the tribunal in The Hague. Uh, there, there, there should be no compromise on these matters. Uh, Slovenia was uh, the first ex-Yugoslav country to enter the EU and NATO um, at the same time. Um, do you believe in NATO more than in um, European foreign and security policy? Uh, I think that this is a false choice. I think we, what we believe in in Slovenia is um, strengthening of European common uh, foreign and security policy. We think that this is a vital element of European future. We have to think strategically about uh, common foreign and security policy. Um, and in that context, I would say we, we, we need to have clarity with regard to accession of Turkey in European Union. What does European Union want globally? How does it relate to uh, major areas uh, of crisis and potential wealth such as the Middle East where Turkey is uh, an immediate neighbor? So I think that we, we need common uh, foreign and security policy not only as a mechanism for coordination in specific foreign policy issues of today we need it also as a strategic vision of Europe. And here I think we need more than we currently have. You mentioned Turkey. Are you in favor of its accession to the EU? Yes. Personally, yes. Europe has to figure out what it wants to be globally. 
and I think Europe with Turkey will be much more important globally. Another issue which is causing a lot of uh, debate is immigration. Um, yes. Do you think the EU is going in the right direction, that immigration policies are the right ones at this stage? Well, I'm not entirely sure what uh, European immigration policy is at this point. I think that it is still very much um, uh, a project in the making. And I think that European Union will have to figure out how to open itself to larger immigration. We'll, we'll need more immigration and we live as a part of globalized world so Europe cannot be a fortress. Um, at the same time Europe has to figure out how to how to invest more and better in places from which the immigration or emigration pressure on Europe is coming. Finally, the Slovenian presidency of the EU will be followed by France. country like Slovenia, it's symbolically quite important to find itself presiding this, uh, this um, um, eminent group of European states at the time between these two major players. And obviously the German uh, presidency has had an influence on how Slovenia's presidency will go. I mean, after all, the German presidency started the uh, new treaty uh, discussions and well, restarted them. And France obviously is eager to, to continue. And, and we are in the middle. And this is just wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention.